Never, ever, ever when a man calls you back after two weeks of ignoring you, say, why didn't you call? No. What you can do instead is get your need met, which is connection. You can do that with text messages. It's a great thing that we can do now is rather than say, why didn't you call or waiting for him to call? It's just a little text message. Uh, you're familiar with Lauren's text message techniques that she has in her, her class, Understanding Men, which I highly recommend as well. Michelle's magnificent. Lauren is magnificent. And she has a, a six-week course for women understanding men. So when he pulls away, don't call him up, but send him a FYI, a note, just a short little note. I, I just went for coffee and I, I had, they had the most amazing almond croissants. It was like there was rainbows in the sky. All you're doing is telling him, <laughs> you um, imagine... He asks you, how was your day? He didn't ask you. He's pulling away. But what happens is when men pull away for a while, then they're afraid to come back because they're afraid I hurt your feelings or, or you'll be mad at me or whatever. So count that one out and move on. You want to just create the message of you are talking, you're here, and you're happy even though he's not in your space. Okay, that's it. He needs to remember, yeah, she's a happy woman. Yes, she's fulfilling. She's easy to please. Okay, I like that. So you just, it's amazing just to have a, a woman not asking for more at that point. He's pulling away, you don't ask for more. It's when he's coming close to you, that's when you ask for more. And you ask for little things. Would you do this for me? It'd be so helpful if you did this. You know, if you have a, you know, I have one woman who's just fallen madly in love with this man because he fixes her, her sort of physical things, her toilet, he fixes her deck, he fixes this, and she can't help but just open her heart to him. And then when he doesn't do it, uh, she gets all upset. I said, no, you have to keep asking. Remember, you asked him, you told him I had this problem. Would you do this for me? If she probably didn't say, would you do it? She just sort of put it out there. But what I'm saying is actually say, would you help me? It's a magic phrase to have. Uh, men always, that's what we all want to be in relationships. We want to help each other. It's just that that's the male side of us. Women have a male side of them. They have a lot of testosterone, just not as much as men. And what we know to be the case, biologically, our heart closes when our stress levels go up. Okay, this is biology. Okay, you literally have less blood flow coming to the to the left prefrontal cortex, which is optimism. And when you're not feeling optimistic, your heart will tend to close. You're feeling pessimistic. Pessimistic is the right side of the brain is activated. So under stress, if you have any blood flow going to your brain at that time, it will go to the right side. You want to have you want to be able to go right side and left side. Do the left side negative with your journaling or with your girlfriends or with your therapist or with your coach is all important things. Don't go to him for that. But when you do the Venus talk, you can talk about other things that are bothering you, not him. That's all key to this. It's mean, a huge distinction right there. Yeah, it's so big. It's so big. And he's going to give advice in the beginning and you can very gently just say, well, that makes sense. But actually right now, I just need to talk about this and, and you're, you know, just you being someone listening to me makes me feel good. I'm not alone. You know, for me as a woman, being feeling alone is a big source of stress. And just that you're with me, it just makes me feel so good. That's why I like going out with you. The other night we were at this movie and, you know, you walk me to the car, you know, like I met a friend, just a woman who's single. And, and I was with my wife and she was single and bumped into each other at the ice cream store. May I walk you to your car? And she said, no. I can do it myself. I let her do it herself. And maybe <laughs> I should have just said, no, I'm going to do it anyway. Actually, that would have made her feel much better. I just forgot to do it. But it was like, I'm happy to walk you to your car. It's just a, yes, I, I'm a confident woman. I can do all this myself. Let him help you. And when he does it, you'll feel something. And what you feel may be a little embarrassed. Maybe you feel a, a, like that felt really good. Or maybe you'll feel sad at, that I don't have that in my life. This is all good. Get you to feel your emotions of vulnerability. And the biggest one that I was building up to, doing a lot of foreplay for this point, because it's a hard sell, but it's so beautiful. The ultimate technique is when you get to that stage in a relationship, not on your first, second, third, fourth date, okay? This is, you still have all the dopamine, the attractions there, but you get to a certain point where, where you say, you know, for me to have sex, I need to feel I'm in a committed relationship. And that's that's how you bring up that subject, by the way. It's when he says, why can't we go further? Because I like to be in a committed relationship. It just doesn't feel good if I'm opening my heart to you and you're off with some other woman. Everybody knows that. So it's, it's all fine. So that's a dynamic. Now you're in a committed relationship and then you start feel safer with him. 
Then you say, you know, what I've learned in my life, kind of like how Bonnie told me, you know, if you were to do that, then I would feel more insecure. I couldn't grow in my love. You can just say, you know, I'm this confident, capable woman at work, but there's a there's a vulnerable part of me that that likes to ha- hear you say you like me, you enjoy being with me, you think I'm beautiful, that you want to be with me. For every woman deep inside wants a commitment that that nobody's going to take you away. I want you to be my man. I want to be your woman. Something along those lines. You have to find your own language for it. But the bottom line is what I've found is that if I can express my own insecurities and you reassure me, I will feel so good. So just so I'll feel so good, even though maybe there's other women that don't have insecurities. I have insecurities, but that's why I appreciate you so much. One technique you can say to reveal insecurities is you can say, you know, you're the most amazing man. I feel like you're a diamond, you know, and if you have a lot of diamonds, you're afraid somebody's going to take them and you're like my diamond. And so I, I, when I love you so much, I start becoming afraid of losing you. And I know you love me. I know you care about me. You do so many things for me, but I still have this part. The better you are, the more insecure I get in touch with. And so to hear you say you love me is really helpful. And for me to say to you, do you love me? And then you say, and of course, I know you love me intellectually, but emotionally, do you love me? And then you say, I love you. And then I'll say, how much do you love me? And then you say, I love you with all my heart. And then I'm going to say, "Are you? do you like being with me? And I'm going to say, I love being with you. I like being with me. Did you enjoy going to, doing this for me the other day when I asked you? Yes, I love doing it. These little things I'm happy to do. Are you sure if I ask for little things, it's okay for to, that, you, that I can ask you? Yes, you can ask me for anything. So what you're revealing in words, that's very important, in words, you're revealing in words to him your insecurities. Because this is going on when men are in their cave. Is he mad at me? Is he punishing me? What do I have to do to get him back? This is insecurity. This is a sweet exercise that you just say, this will just help me stay in touch with my female vulnerability, which makes estrogen. I need more estrogen. And older I get, I need more estrogen. So this seems, it's awkward for me, maybe a little awkward for you, but if we do this, you'll see, I'll feel good. And I think you'll feel good because I really need it. I really appreciate it. So it's such an easy task for a man to just live, listen to her for a few minutes as she's, do you love me? How much do you love me? Do you like me? Do you think I'm beautiful? Do you always want to be with me? Am I the one for you? And just to hear your positive responses and whatever other little insecurities like that come up, there's a bunch that can come up. Then, then when he says, yes, I love you, he will feel his love more. Why? Because you're letting it in and you're feeling it more. So you need the reassurance. And when he provides it, it's literally like he plants his flag out there and he'll defend that flag and his brain will keep finding reasons to justify and be right that he says, I love you. It's not enough for love to be grow just to secretly feel inside. Well, sure, I love my partner, but men don't feel it as much as when you're needing it and he says it and he solved the problem when giving her what she needs. And biologically, your estrogen will go up. Just like when, you know, when people clap for me, my testosterone goes up. When my wife is happy to see me, my testosterone goes up. When she asks me to go, will you make orange juice for me? Uh, tonight, she says, we, you know, will you take me to the grocery store and we're going to get a steak and make a steak for me? I said, okay, happy to do it. And I'm not always happy to do it. But at this point, when I'm making the steak, it's already, the ha- unhappiness is gone. You know, it's a hassle to make the steak. It doesn't always come out right. You know, so I'd rather just, why don't we go to a restaurant and get steak? She's, oh, your steaks are so much better. I love them. And, and it's so sweet. Asking for help is such a beautiful way for a man to feel motivated and for a woman's estrogen to go up so she can feel more accepting, more trusting, and more appreciative of him. So this is a masterful technique that I said, none of that last one I just gave, this last technique of the reassurance exercise is not in any of my books. Uh, you know, Venus talks, sharing your feelings is, and asking for help is, and whole chapters on how to ask for help. But this is how to ask for reassurance. And it's a very powerful thing. Because as a man, why do you need reassurance for? It doesn't make sense to me. Of course, I love you. Of course, I do this. So you set it up with 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 message. Of course, you love me. You do so much for me. But because you do so much, you're like a diamond. You know, imagine going out in public and you've got a diamond around your neck that's huge. You're afraid somebody's going to take it. So that's it stimulates this insecurity. So I just need a little reassurance. It will take a few minutes to do. Now, once you're doing it outside the bedroom, now at the times when you're making love. When you're making love, let's do it when we make love. 
And while you're making love, you have this first physical arousal, then you go into emotional arousal and your estrogen levels will go so high. Her, your estrogen going so high raises his testosterone level so high and therefore he can last longer. He can be more about you. He can take you to higher levels and you feel so much connection to where you begin to feel, yes, I'm yours, you're mine, we are one. You know, it's it's like a, a sense of ownership, even though there's freedom along with it, because you're never trying to change your partner. But you're mine. It's like, you know, my car. And when I teach men, how do you have another thing about understanding a woman is empathy. When you have empathy for her, doesn't mean you're telling her how to not feel that way. You're just validating why she feels that way. Now, I might disagree with her when she feels, oh, there's so much traffic and you know so stressful well traffic's not stressful for me i'm very good at it okay so <laughs> i have no issue with it. i know how to change lanes go to here go here it's all exciting challenge for me raises my testosterone so i can't agree that too much traffic is i don't have the experience of it having her experience but i can experience if she says to me i was so frustrated when there was traffic and i didn't get there in time and it was a bummer i felt i was so disappointed and now I'm concerned they're not going to trust me next time. And it was so embarrassing when I showed up and I was like 10 minutes late. I, was, I should plan better. See, you're revealing, I can relate to all of that. See, that's emotion in, inside mm -hmm. of me. They have this emotion so he can connect to the emotion, even if he doesn't have the experience that you have. You know, be like complaining about your high heel shoes. I never worn high heel shoes. So I don't know what that was like, but oh, I got to wear those high heel shoes. That, and it was so disappointing. So frustrating for me, or I was embarrassed because I slipped out of them, whatever it is. We can relate to emotions. That's why we want to be with a woman, is we want to connect with her femininity because we have a feminine side and it gets awakened by being of service, by hearing, by understanding, by doing things for a woman. Our own female side comes up and that's how we stay on our male and female side. How does a woman stay on her male and female side? Just becoming a man does not allow you to go to your female side. You have all this power on your masculine side. Now, what's the power of your feminine side? They want you on both powers. And that's asking for help, taking responsibility to ask for what you want, to get what you want by asking the right way, by asking the right amount. You just can't ask for too much right away. You've got to build this up. You've got to train him. You've got to give him the experience and then gradually ask for more and more and more. And then you get married because <laughs> you feel like, okay, I can get what I need. And still you have to keep asking for more because men forget. They, we have this mm -hmm. tendency. We have this tendency. I did it once. Now I don't have to do it again. You know, it's like mission accomplished. I don't have to write this book again. I wrote it. It's done. It's out there. We're going for a long time. What do I need to write a book for? So it's it, that's their mind as you accomplish it, it's done as opposed to you have to do it again and again and again. And if you women want to feel... They want their relationship to feel like it was when the dopamine was there and estrogen was there and his testosterone was there. W what were you doing at that time? You were you were all the time concerned. Okay, is he the right one for me? Does he love me? Does he like me? Am I pretty enough? Does he want to be with me? Could he be the one for me? You were all the time looking for reassurance. And what was he doing? He was constantly looking for reassurance that this is a woman that I can fulfill. This is a woman that I have what it takes to make her happy. And when men don't get that reassurance, that's when men are giving up on a relationship. They say the same thing. They say, no matter what I do, it's never enough to make her happy. That's the bottom line for men. So her job, in a sense, is to open her heart, reassuring him all the time, as much as possible, that he has what it takes to make her happy. He doesn't have to change, but he can do more. That's because you ask, you get such a subtle distinction between complaining and asking. Complaining never works, nagging never works, asking. And if he doesn't do it the first time, ask again another time, ask again the third time as if it's the first time. No emotional charge. You just know it's going to take a while to train this guy. And after three times you've asked and he doesn't do it, then realize maybe I'm asking too much. I need to say something littler and train her with that. And then train him with that. So you build up his ability to recognize little things make a big difference.